Next up on the channel, we have the all electric Fiat E Doblo, first electric commercial Fiat we've had on the channel. We've had the Fiat 500e. So let's have a look at its commercial cousin. Let's have a look around the outside, the inside, and take it out for a drive. So the Fiat e by based on the combustion engine platform, same as all of the other Stellantis vans. So we've had the Combo from Opel Vauxhall, we've had the Peugeot, we've had the Citroen, we've had the Toyota. And now to start wrapping things up, we have the Fiat e -Doblo. This is probably the nicest front across all of them. Uh, you have a really nice, we've got that new Fiat naming, uh, rather than the badge, it's actually the word. You've got your halogen bulbed headlights. And you've got that chrome detail that goes all the way across. Uh, this trim has the uh, fog lights in underneath. No frunk. Uh, along the side, you've got the 16 inch steel wheels. That little indicator from Stellantis. And the little wing mirror that I always talk about. Body coloured. It's metallic silver. And this one has all the nice branding on the side of it. And so it has a full range of up to 280 kilometers. I'm getting probably near the 220. This will dictate how fast you're driving or what you're carrying in the back. It also has 17 ADAS systems. So everything from blind spot, uh, forward collision warning, lane keeping assist and keyless entry. This is the long wheelbase. It comes in two lengths. And you have the charging port here. A seven or 11 kilowatt in AC, depending on what market you're in. And then, like all of the Stellantis brands, up to 100 kilowatt uh, on the DC side of things. So it can fast charge if you can get the charger to give it enough juice. And then down along the side. So double doors on the long wheelbase version, the, the S2 length, or L2 length. And so what I'll do is I will pause it here and put the width and the height up on the screen. And then also the payload capacity in on the back there. Then at the back, you don't have the reversing camera or any sensors on this base trim, um, up to 4.4 meters cubed of cargo and a thousand kg of payload. But sometimes you'll see them up the top here with a, like a reversing camera unit. So it's a 6040 door. Actually, just before we open that door, you can see the e Doblo and my little license plates after going walkies. that massive Fiat professional badge and the biggest of any of them I see. You definitely won't know, miss that it's a Fiat. So the doors weight open at 90 degrees and then you can release it and it will go to 180, but they won't lock there. But if you did need that space to get in and get out, that's the same on both sides. You've got that clip. And then I'll pause on the screen as well and put the height and the width up. You can see it there. The sun is low. You've got some tie-off points. You've got your uh, little light. You've got six tie-off points on the bottom. This one has the rubberized floor. Yeah, good. And then you've got some uh, tie-off points further up. F another four. And you even have 12 volt back here. Very good. Nice. And then two events available, as I said. Genius at work. I love to drive that all week. And then the other side there. So yeah, that's the exterior of the Fiat e Doblo. As I said, you wouldn't really know any difference between this and the regular Doblo. Now, some of the Stellantis space saving and ingenuity across all of the brands. You've got that central seat that has that center table that spins around whether you want to be working on it or having your lunch in it. And that turns into your third passenger seat. But we always talk about this bump in the dash that probably would be a bit too tight. And then you have the ability to drop the seat down into a flat. And if you go to the side door at the side here, you can see it's got that magic hatch opening. And so that drops all the way down. And so you've got a full through put all the way through three meters i think all the way through so it's handy to have that can i put it back one-handed i think i can and then you have the ability also you've got that little yellow to push the seat up if you want space in underneath there as well 
very good. Little secret compartment. Drop that down. And another space in underneath the passenger seat then if you wanted to put your cables. Where they've put the cables here is just hanging up in this bag on the other side. On the passenger side you have fairly uh, robust, so good driving handle, electric windows, uh, handle and then some space in underneath, some good pocket sizes. And then a small coffee cup holder, upper dash compartment, shelf and then another pocket in underneath here. The ability to open the boot, or sorry the, the uh, bonnet. And then some storage in behind the colour touch screen, uh, wired Android Auto on Apple CarPlay. And that's through here, USB type A. You've got your hazards on your center locking. You've got your uh, auto, um, uh, climate control. That's going to come in now. If it, there's your Fiat badge. Um, and then your little terrain selector would be on a combustion engine vehicle, your passenger, your, sorry, your handbrake, electronic handbrake, your key, uh, sorry, your coin holder. Drive modes, uh, neutral, sorry normal eco and sport and then your park reverse neutral and then b mode is your two-stage regenerative braking small space in underneath here for storage and then your 12 volt is, is down here which is all i always find a bit weird um and some good space up on top as well so if you wanted some more storage no mirror for the passenger um, again halogen bulbs which is interesting to see on an electric vehicle but let's pop over to the far side i'll actually pop the bonnet so you can see what is it like in underneath? You can see the actual somewhere in here. What's here? Loads of space. You could get an aftermarket tray in there if you wanted to put your cables in. And then you've got your aerial up top. On the driver's door, you have the ability to lock the rear cargo area. Your dual window controls and then your door mirrors left and right some space in underneath there for some reason the rear view mirror has been taken down because it's a steel bulkhead there isn't the ability to see back here so you have the height and uh, forward and back on the actual driver seat some more storage up here coffee cup holder uh, the ability to change the headlight level if you've got carrying a load your schedule for your charging and your preconditioning and then your driver assist to off lane keep. It is a traditional key. Get the Fiat logo on it. And you put it in. And it just lights up there, very analog. So on the left hand side is your speed, then how much your battery you're using from the uh, by using the air con. So if I turn that on and turn the, the temperature up you'll see that starting to go up. When it, uh, when I engage the actual vehicle, because I'm not on at the moment, I have to click ready. You can see it goes up there straight away then. It's, you're using a lot of the battery to heat up the cabin. And if I turn that off, it goes down again. And then you have your battery level as an analog, but it does have the range down here, 144, nearly at half, automatic headlights, and then on the other side, then is charge eco power where you're when you're using the actual accelerator. Has the door open? The ability then to check service level lights down in here. The brightness of the display. Steering wheel is a nice steering wheel. It is a three spoke. Um, and then on the left hand side is your phone. Good tactile buttons. And on the right hand side is your voice control and your volume up and down. Your cruise control is down in underneath here. Um, yeah. The steering wheel itself is reach and rake in and out, up and down. So that is pretty much everything inside. You've got your grab handles up there then for passengers. And it's the same over here for driver. Hopefully the driver won't be holding on with it. But that is the interior and exterior of the Fiat e Doblo. Let's take it out for a drive. What's it like driving the Fiat e Doblo? Yeah, great seat position like all vans. I would like blind spot. I'm not sure if it's an option, but it's definitely something I think that should be a standard across all commercial vehicles, all vehicles in general. Nice steering wheel, good size, nice and circular, and it's got this functions on the actual wheel as well, rather than on some of the Stellantis siblings. It's got another uh, little stalk above my right knee for audio, etc. 
It's not bad road noise today. It is stormy. It is Storm Debbie here in Ireland. Um, so the van is getting pushed around the place, but it's a nice acceleration in it. It has a couple of different driver modes. It has power, normal, and eco. Keep it in normal. Um, nice color touch screen as well. Wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And it's got two-stage regenerative braking, so you just bring it down to B uh, for urban driving and then leave it in D then for the likes of this motorway driving. Another thing I think that should be a standard is either reversing sensors and a minimum, and it's not on this van. Uh, uh, and on top of that then, cameras, uh, a reversing camera. I know that you can get the unit, and we spoke about it. There are driver assists in this with regards to cruise control, etc. But um, there are some stuff out there that I think we should be, again, that... And we all learned, well, the majority of us learned to drive without reversing sensors and without cameras, but it's becoming the norm now, and it's for safety more than anything else. It's not saying that you're a poor driver. Acceleration is nicely mapped. Brakes are good. Visibility is good. It's got a nice quarter panel light down at the A pillar. Small bit of a blind spot down there, but not bad. And the functionality, there's so much storage around the place. It's a 100 kilowatt motor, front wheel drive, giving you 136 PS and 210 newton meters of torque. So it's the same across all of the Stellantis brands. We're starting to see that upgraded in the newer cars. I'm presuming that's going to come across to the vans as well. I saw something about a Combo E getting an upgrade there with Paul Kirby, electric van man in the United Kingdom. And I'm presuming that's going to come across all of the Stellantis brands. So your Peugeot, Peugeot, Opel Vauxhall, your Fiat's, your Citroen's, your Toyota's, which have that agreement, agreement with regards to commercial. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, you could definitely get on with your daily job and, and be confident in it. Um, let me have a look with regards to usage. Currently at 19.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and with a 45 kilowatt hour battery usable you're getting probably um, that 200 and 220 hasn't been doing a lot of motorway that's been a lot of urban driving uh, motorway really kills this first generation of Stellantis vans no matter what the brand is it just does not like that higher speed and being not as very aero unfortunate so hopefully you've enjoyed my look at the Fuyet e Doblo. make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're interested in all other electric vans there's a full playlist i'll stick up on the screen and in the description i think i've nearly covered everything at the moment that's in the marketplace like the video and share and remember if you think an ev is for you leave it to me and i'll review thank you very much for watching